Thank you for joining us from wherever you are. This afternoon, the controversy over acquisition of Yachimota Forest Lands has taken a different twist as documents emerge. Former Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission, Kwejo Usufriye, will portions of the forest land to his relatives. Sir John also in the said document is believed to have willed portions of a Ramsar site at Sakumono to other relatives. The revelations come a week after intense public outcry over the release of portions of the Achimota Forest, which government says it has or it was returning to the original owners. Government maintained it was only releasing the peripheries of the land upon the request of the Owu family in the Executive Instrument 144, which was effected on May 1. But critics say the EI must be reversed in a new twist which has thrown up more controversies over the sale of the forest lands. The former Forestry Commission CEO who died in 2020 has been captured giving off some of the lands registered under three separate companies to his children and other relatives. This afternoon, there are calls for an audit to be conducted on the Achimota forest lands amidst these controversies. Now let's get into details of portions of that will that has generated such a storm on social media with respect to the Achimota Forest and other protected sites, shall we? So we have it here, a parcel of land in the name of JK Pro Limited and some 5.541 acres of the parcel of land of a forest is being willed to three children and a nephew. And another piece of land in the name of uh, another company there, which is Faso Limited, uh, also 0 0.987 acres is also being willed to Sir John's nephews. Now, there's also another parcel of land which he co-owns with another individual, and his portion of that land is which he's giving off to another relative in his will, which we now know has become public. Now, another parcel is jointly owned in the name of DML Limited. That portion which belongs to him, is also being willed to a relative who lives in the United States of America. And then also there's this particular one, which has to do with the Ramsar site at Sakumono. 5.07 acres of that Ramsar site is being willed equally to sisters and their children. So these are the issues that have been playing out in the last few hours and has to do with the first of all the Achimota Forest Lands and then the Ramsar site at Sakumon on social media. Many of you have been reacting and you know commenting on the development. We begin with H. Christy Prempe. He is with the CDD. He says the focus on the old family is just a distraction. The devil is in the detail. In the identities of a sublessist who now own pieces of a land or have sold or will theirs to others. Around $2.5 million per acre is what we're talking about. Could be higher now, he says. Are you sure you are ready for every devil in the details, though? He's asking. Kofi Bento of Imani Africa, he's asking, or he says, it will be best to confiscate all vacant land left of Yashimota Forest and declare its government property. Those who claim ownership should now have to show how they got those lands. Manasseh Azura Wini, celebrated investigative journalist with the fourth estate, says that Chimota Forest is not for sale. It has actually been sold. And then on Twitter, many of you have also been commenting. So at Anand Perry says that Chimota Forest is far gone. It was shed long before Sir John even died, according to him. Now uh, at uh, Ruchi P2008, the same document showing the Ramsar site owned by the state through the Forestry Commission has been shared and converted into bricks and concrete under the same Sir John leadership and then a final one at Kweku Rafiki too says on a more serious note Ghana is doomed so those are some of your comments that have been coming through on Facebook and Twitter and of course all the other social media platforms but are there any legal you know challenges that are thrown up in all of this joining us via Zoom is private legal practitioner Justice Abdullah thank you Justice Abdullah for joining us so in this case we understand some of the, you know, properties have been willed to children in some cases, nephews, nieces, etc. But now we're seeing that certain aspects or certain uh, properties in question have to do with the Achimota Forest Lands one and then the Ramsar site at Sakumono. Is there any chance the state can come in at this point and, for example, you know, cause a halt in the execution of that will so there's an audit to be conducted? Indeed, um, good afternoon. Um, the state um, has every right 
to intervene to identify whether or not any portions of state lands have been um, the subject of um, a private will. Um, and, and so, to that extent, if, if it comes to that, the state can always take back what rightly belongs to it. But I don't think that this will go around, but for the fact that this particular case has generated this kind of controversy, I wouldn't think that the state will go around um, attempting to identify whoever has the will of to his, um, um, his family or friends. Because really, um, once it belongs to the state, uh, whoever is um, aware of any portion of uh, any land or property belonging to the state cannot legally take over such portion because it was not right for the person who did the will um, to convey it the, um, either because it was unlawful or because it, he did not own it. It cannot be a subject of any such interest. It's, 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 it's similar to, I mean, um, to uh, uh, any private individual. Um, willing, let's say, TV3 studios to um, his family. I mean, the fact that the person has captured TV3 as part of his will doesn't necessarily mean that the, the family doesn't have TV3 as their property because it has not belonged to him. So, however, it's, I can understand why this has generated this kind of controversy um, because of the personality of John, let's say, John, and, and among other things, because the, the areas that were under his watch were the areas that appear to have been the subject of the will. And so the state will naturally have interest in investigating this, and, and at least to assure all of us that these properties that are um, subject of conservation and indeed protection for, for all of for our goodness sake okay. um, will be preserved going forward. And so it's a good idea, it's a good attempt if the state comes into it and then assure, reassure all of us that those properties are still state lands and they are preserved for the purpose for which they were acquired in the first place. And that, that brings me to my next question. The Lands Ministry has said it is, you know, requesting all the documentation for the lands in question. But we also know that this will we're speaking about is a subject of contention also in court because some parties appear not to be, you know, satisfied with all of that. What role will the Lands Ministry's investigation play in this particular court matter which has to do with the contestation of a will itself? Well, if the state does um, go ahead with its threat to um, investigate um, the, the portions of the property um, of the will that has been given to um, the beneficiaries, then it turns out that indeed those portions are the um, property of the state. Um, those portions will be taken off um, um, of, 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 of the will. In other words, the beneficiaries will lose those portions. And I'm sure it will put the entire will into a difficult um, difficulty because um, for such persons who, who would lose these areas, they will naturally contest maybe the validity or otherwise of the will because um, because their interest will naturally be at stake. So they will never allow matters to just lie. But they cannot contest the state because these are properties that are well known to be the properties of the state and they've been well demarcated and um, and and well preserved for for close to a century. And so it is so much easier for the state to take out this portion, but the rest of the will may be contested on, on, the, on the merits of it. If, if it is valid for, the, for whatever purposes, those who um, um, obtain any benefit from it may get those benefits, but those who lose the benefits that goes to the state um, so bad. Okay, thank you very much, Justice Abdul, private legal practitioner, helping us understand the complexities in this matter. We all know that as this matter broke, the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry had indicated that they are requesting documentation to look into the claims that have been made over these parcels of land, being at the Achimota Forest and also at the Ramsar site at Sakumono. But does this throw up any controversies again about conflict of interest or public office holders and assets declaration. Joining us, Professor Bafwa Jimendia. He is a governance analyst, former uh, governance advisor to the United Nations. Thank you, Prof, for joining us. So many have said, for example, beyond all the legalese that has been going on in the last few hours, there's a, a question keenly about conflict of interest. Yes, of course, uh, because the person in question uh, chaired the uh, Forestry Commission uh, talk the CEO of the Forestry Commission, and part of his responsibilities uh, have been to take care of uh, public uh, lands and all. So if it is proven to be true that uh, whilst in office he acquired pieces of uh, public land, then of course there's a serious uh, case of conflict of interest. 
I think this whole issue raises a more a critical issue that we need to confront as a people as we try to combat corruption in our country. You know, we have the Public Officers uh, Declaration of Access Act back in 1998 at 5.5.0 that required all public officials to submit uh, the assets to the Auditor General. In fact, the law requires them to make the submission before taking office. Then at the end of every four years or at the end of their term, uh, they're supposed to, uh, you know, uh, go back again and if they are still in office to add or to, to take the form. Then what the law is not precise about is after you submit these uh, access to the Auditor General, what happens next? Because the law does not require that the Auditor General should audit what you submitted at the end of your tenure for a determination to be made as to whether you have acquired additional assets and if you did, how you came by those assets, especially if on the face of it, the new acquisitions far out, uh, you know, they are, they kind of uh, go beyond okay. uh, reasonably, so to speak, your income. And that is not done. So there's a loose end to that. That makes it very difficult for people to assess the acquisition of assets while in office. Mm, would you say the Lance Ministry's, you know, announcement that it is immediately looking into these claims to ascertain whether or not there are any, you know, facts or truth to this is enough? Or there needs to be a lot more beyond the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources taking a step like that? Well, first of all, I think the Lands uh, Ministry is the, is the appropriate place to take the first look at it. Because as you know, a week or so ago, there was a whole lot of uh, public debate about Archimota uh, Forest and the acquisition of the land by some private people. And I think it was the land ministry that came out to, to clarify and explain matters to the public. And the same issue we're talking about, that is to say a public office allegedly uh, taking hold of parts of this office. So I think the land uh, minister has taken the right decision. And let's hope that once you get the report out, it should be clear to the public as to whether or not the officer in question here acquired them appropriately or not. And even if it did, as I said earlier, there could be still a serious question of conflict of interest. But I think it's, it's, it's proper that the Lands uh, Lands Ministry take a close look at it, investigate, and tell the public the findings of this investigation. Mm. Would it be an overkill if individuals, environmental NGOs, or any other, you know, public citizen takes a step further than just the Lands Ministry, for example, head to court or shraj or any of the other anti-corruption office of a special prosecutor, for example, in this request? Well, I think uh, in the first place, any citizen has the right to go to shraj to register a complaint. So the fact that the Lands uh, Commission has taken up the investigation doesn't stop uh, the right duties of citizens to pursue it at uh, other offices. So those who feel strongly about it and have legitimate uh, reasons to file a complaint should also proceed to SRAG, which is the ultimate uh, state institution in this particular case. But as I said, the only reason why I support the land minister's initiative is because this has been a case for the public uh, over the past week. There have been a lot of discussions back and forth on it. So if uh, it happens that there, is, uh, there was a, a former public officer in charge of the Lands Commission uh, who was also in charge, therefore, of the uh, Chimota Forest and is coming out that, in fact, parts of these lands were taken legally or illegally by this person, then, of course, the land minister uh, it, it can do that. But as I said, other civil society organizations interested in this particular case have every legitimate right to also pursue it uh, with the shortage.